Hello, and welcome back to the Payday 2 Starter Guide. For more information on the Starter Guide, check the first episode linked in the video description. Today we are covering the new safe house, as well as continental coins. Starting level 25, you're able to head to the new safe house. It's like the last safe house, but it's new. Okay, but there is a lot of stuff here that we probably should go over, so let's check it out. First and foremost, you're created by John Cleese, the Monty Python legend, as well as the king from Shrek 2, who portrays Aldstone the butler in this game. Talk to him is mostly just some flatly delivered jokes about Payday, though I kind of have a little bit of a soft spot for the butler where I don't have for Rust. Immediately to the right, you will find Ethan and Hila Klein. Yeah, the YouTubers. They're here even if you don't buy the H3H3 DLC, so just, I guess, suck it up. Behind this room is the garage, where Rust and Houston are working on their bike and van respectively, Sydney has a little art corner, and Joy's outside with a van full of hacker equipment. On the other side of this ground floor is Bonnie, Jiro, and Jimmy. Sangres has a little room right near here, and Chains has the back of the floor to himself in the armory. Upstairs is a kitchen, and, and Duke has the icebreaker event, though he might move to the other side once Crimefest starts up, where his little library is. There's a room off to the side for Scarface, and in this glass-walled office is Hoxton with the FBI files, Dallas at his desk, and Clover in her security room. In the basement is our vault, Aldstone's Raid World War II advertisement room, Dragon's Gym, Jacket's kind of gross weird little hidey hole, Bodie's working on a surfboard, and Sokol is looking to play some hockey. There's also Wick's shooting range and Wolf's office. Uh, okay, I mean, none of this is all that special yet, we haven't unpacked, but that's where Continental Coins come in. Starting at level 25, you can begin collecting these tokens for use in upgrading the safe house. You earn one with every 1 million experience you collect. You can earn six through safe house dailies, six more each for unlocking trophies. You can earn a few by playing the storyline, and by a few I mean 135 total for beating every mission. Achievement milestones offer you a few more here and there, and lastly, Crime Spree, which is a mode I'll talk about later, offers them as rewards. At first, it's a slow grind, so I recommend looking at trophies and safe house dailies to get a good amount of coins first. Safe house dailies are a special side job offered by a member of our crew, and it changes every 24 hours. The reward is always six continental coins, though sometimes it isn't worth it. For instance, Chains might offer a daily job to land 25 kills with thrown grenades. Or his other daily job requires beating an armored transport mission without using a drill, which requires shape charges or a saw on missions with lacking cover, the former of which destroys some of your loot and requires opening more trucks and spending more time, and the latter leaves you with one less gun. So, I've created a little bit of a list here of the safe house dailies I think a newer player could complete with just a little bit of effort, and these are worth the six coins in my opinion. So of Dallas's two daily jobs, the trip down memory lane is the easier of the two. It can be earned in about 20 minutes at most with two very quick rounds of counterfeit. Don't print the money, just take the plates and run, and it's super quick. You can beat it on any difficulty, so just like, play it a normal twice, I guess. Chains of Side Job Boom requires killing 25 enemies with grenades. We went over this one literally a paragraph ago. It's a pretty easy grind. Houston offers two missions that are both kind of tricky, but of the two, stealing all the paintings is the easier of the bunch, as the gallery always has nine paintings regardless of difficulty, whereas Diamond Store requires playing the heist on Overkill or above to score 16 bags. Hoxton's two side jobs are both rather simple and just require playing through one heist with a special condition. Someone has to be Hoxton in Hoxton Breakout, and you need to play every tape in Hoxton Revenge. Nice and easy. Bonnie offers two rather easy side jobs, grabbing 20 bags of money or getting 25 kills with a Rivertown Glen melee. Bodie also offers two easier missions, though my Bodie is Ready is probably the easiest one for a low level. The other one requires playing Boiling Point, which is a tough mission. And lastly, Jimmy's Nose Candy mission is a nice and simple one that just requires you to play Nightclub a few times for cocaine. And Scarface, Ethan, Gila, Joy, Duke, and Sangres don't have any safe house dailies, so that's about your lot at the moment. When you upgrade a safe house room, it goes through two more phases. Level 1 is just the stuff in boxes like we've seen, but things get unpacked at level 2, and at level 3 the room is complete. This costs 12 and 24 continental coins each time, always and forever, or 36 to go straight from level 1 to 3. Most of these changes are just cosmetic, but Dallas' room wants to access CrimeNet, Hoxton links to the FBI files where you can read more about the game and look up player stats, Houston lets you customize your van with new paint jobs, Sydney lets you check out various weapon skins available for sale, Bonnie lets you gamble, you can play a hockey minigame with Sokol, test your melee strength with Dragon, test your firearms and combat readiness with Wick, and Joy's got a little browser minigame that you can play. Of the bunch, I personally think Wick's room is the first one you should upgrade. The firing range is buggy, but it's a very great way to test new weapons and get a feel for them. And the kill room is a fun minigame that lets you get used to combat and movement in Payday 2. Following that, I usually go for Houston's side of the garage, as the van skin can really set the tone for heists you host, but just kind of go for what sounds right to you. It's your safe house. 
While upgrading rooms is nice, that's not really decorating per se, is it? That's where trophies come in. They're kind of like achievements, but instead of going into your Steam profile, they appear in the safe house and award you continental coins. I'm not going to go over all of them, there's a ton of them, but I'll mention a couple that I think you could complete pretty quickly. The Altstone Heritage ones involve getting kills with the push daggers or a firearm, and they're pretty simple and only require the cash to unlock the guns. The dartboard and the dozer mask ask for 500 headshot kills and 100 special unit kills respectively, which you can grind up very quickly and easily. The Falco Genie and the I Got This trophy you can get both at the same time if you know what you're doing. I guess I will have to link <laughs> to Monday's video. The medic trophy is earned by killing 100 medics, and they're very common special unit once they start appearing. Mother of Mothers just pretty much reminds you to host your own game when you can. And the Enter the Gungeon character statues require finding five statuettes each, scattered across pretty basic missions. Note for that those four, you can just grab the trophy and restart over and over, you don't need to finish the mission. Continental coins aren't just for upgrading the safe house though, otherwise Overkill could have offered up exactly 1,728 coins, add multiples of 36 for every new highest or past joy, instead of means to potentially gain an infinite amount, and that's where the second element of Continental coins comes in. You can use them to unlock most weapon parts as well as Team AI skills. The Team AI are bot crew members that join you on solo or offline modes, and you can give them special bonuses. You start with one ability and three boosts from the get-go, but for six Continental Coins you can unlock three more abilities, and for two coins you can unlock another five boosts. On this screen, the three AI are presented in the order of who will be dropped last when new players join to first from left to right. So put important skills and abilities on the leftmost Team AI. I personally opt for quick, sharp-eyed, and piercing in that order for abilities, and I pick just three boosts to kind of work for how I play. As for unlocking weapon mods, you can spend six coins to get an item that you would need to get from a drop, which works well to eliminate much of the item grinding you would need to complete otherwise. None of that's on the console version though, unfortunately, so have fun playing car shop. 30 times. I don't know why I said car shop. Any mods that you cannot unlock with Continental Coins need to be unlocked through regular achievements, so it's not everything. Additionally, there are a few weapon Additionally, there are a few weapon mods in Payday 2 that are Continental Coin exclusive, including the milled barrel for the Deagle and the gorgeous reinforced frame for the Judge. They usually don't offer any bonuses, or if they do, they're shared with other mods. It's usually cosmetic. One other thing of note when it comes to the safe house is that every three days there can be a raid. This is a three-wave holdout mission in which you must protect a mountain of money from enemies. You just need to fight, and after three assault waves, the heist ends and you earn six coins. Raids, in my opinion, just aren't worth it usually, as the safe house, especially when fully upgraded, runs very slow and takes a while to load and takes a while to play. On Overkill, the raid takes about 15 minutes and offers the same number of coins as the heist on Normal or Death Sentence. Many people tend to drop into half-completed raids on easier difficulties to get a ton of coins quickly. You can also choose to let the crew handle it, which pushes the raid back 12 hours if you just want to check out the safe house. And because of the raid and the regular safe house are counted as heists, friends can drop in to check out your digs, or you can check out theirs, they can help you with a safe house raid, you can help out them. And because both are heists, either one can build up heat, that's that negative experience debuff you get from heists you play too much of, and the positive modifier you get for heists you don't play much of. I have 13% experience boost on the regular safe house on my main account. You can't complete the regular safe house. Well, I guess then, tune in next time when we cover the vast array of weaponry we have at our disposal. That's all I've got on the content of coins and safe house. If you have anything else you'd like to add, put that in the comments and help out some new players. Till next time, I will see you around. Hey, in case you couldn't figure this one out, I might be getting sick. Uh, I guess, surprise. Or maybe it's allergies, who knows. I mean, I move, you move, and then all of a sudden all the, the new Linkin Park germs are like, yes, and then they, they jam them. I don't know. No, I'm not. Oh, no.